Good morning, everybody. A very warm welcome to our temporary chapel at New England Place. Um, although we're still physically apart from each other, we remind ourselves that we have the unity of our faith to bring us together. Last Thursday was Ascension Day, which is an extremely important feast in our calendar, of which more later. But before we go into that, we're going to start by reminding ourselves of the presence of God, not just in church, but everywhere, in us and around us. And so we have to remember as we go about life that God is around us and it is him whom we serve. And so we sing together with some help from the uh, little choir that uh, uh, that uh, Andrew so helpfully put together. We'll sing our first hymn, Be Still for the Presence of the Lord. mercy and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you all and also with you. Christ has gone up on high leading captivity captive and bringing gifts for all people. As we prepare ourselves to meet him let us call to mind our many failures and sins. You raise the dead to life in the spirit. Lord have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You bring pardon and peace to the broken in heart. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You make one by your spirit the torn and divided. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, Confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We say the glory. Glory to God in the highest, 
and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, Heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray that our risen and ascended Lord will lead us to eternal life. Risen Christ, you have raised our human nature to the throne of heaven. Help us to seek and serve you, that we may join with you at the Father's side, where you reign with the Spirit in glory, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Now Liz is going to read our first lesson for us. The reading is from the Acts of the Apostles. While staying with them, he ordered them not to leave Jerusalem, but to wait there for the promise of the Father. This, he said, is what you have heard from me. For John baptized with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. So when they had come together, they asked him, Lord, is this the time when you will restore the kingdom to Israel? He replied, It is not for you to know the times or periods that the Father has set by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. When he had said this, as they were watching, he was lifted up, and the clouds took him out of their sight. While he was going, and they were gazing up towards heaven, suddenly two men in white robes stood by them. They said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand looking up towards heaven? This Jesus, who has been taken from, up from you into heaven, will come in the same way as you saw him go into heaven. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. In the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to St. Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to the disciples, These are my words when I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets and the Psalms must be fulfilled. And he opened their minds to understand the scriptures, and he said to them, Thus it is written that the Messiah is to suffer and to rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things, and see, I am sending upon you what my father promised. So stay here in the city until you have been clothed with power from on high. Then he led them out as far as Bethany, and lifting up his hands, he blessed them. While he was blessing them, he withdrew from them and was carried into heaven. And they worshipped him and returned to Jerusalem with great joy. And they were continually in the temple, blessing God. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. Christ. Do you ever wish that you were a bit thinner? Or perhaps a bit taller? Or perhaps a bit more hair on your head? Or maybe it's something a bit more serious. You have an addiction that you wish you didn't have. Or maybe you had some trauma or grief in your past that you wish wasn't quite so present, still in your heart. Or maybe you have elderly parents you're taking care of whom you can't stop worrying about. Or perhaps you're unemployed and don't see a job in your future anytime soon. 
or maybe, just maybe, you're actually wondering what all of this has to do with the ascension of Jesus. More of that shortly. These are the sorts of things we'd rather not share with God. We may share them with each other, but we don't really want to share them with God. The things that worry us, the things that annoy us, that make us anxious or depressed. We wouldn't expect them to have any place in our relationship with God. In fact, we may feel rather guilty about them and, and ask for his forgiveness if we ever mention them at all to him. We may feel that I'm worthy of a follower of Christ. Like the Feast of the Trinity or the Incarnation, the doctrine of the Ascension is open to quite a bit of misunderstanding. Many works of art depicting it as Jesus with clouds around his feet, his hands lifted upwards, while his disciples are below, looking up in awe, sometimes perhaps with blank expressions on their faces, as if this is somehow a normal occurrence. And taken to their logical and literal conclusions, these works of art seem to imply Jesus would have ascended up and up, breaking through the clouds and through the Earth's atmosphere, and eventually he would have started orbiting the planet like a, like a satellite. Pretty ridiculous by then, isn't it, in the picture? The end of the Gospel passage I've just read sort of tells us that, well, the Ascension tells us about the Ascension very briefly. While he was blessing them, he left them and was taken into heaven. That's it. One sentence. Jesus blessed them and left to go to heaven. And then he goes on to describe the response of the disciples. They worshipped him and returned to Jerusalem with great joy. And they stayed continually in the temple, praising God. He left them and they respond with joy, praising God. Their beloved leader and teacher have been taken away from them at the cross. Deep sadness and depression. Then he returned at the resurrection. Amazing joy and happiness. And now he's gone and left them again. And they're still happy. So why would they respond to all of that in joyful worship? Well, Jesus did instruct them. He wanted to make sure that they realized this story was a continuation of fulfillment of the much larger story of God's special people, Israel, and that his relationship with the whole of humanity. He went on to open the minds of the disciples because the story of his life, his suffering and his rising from the dead and his ascension was not what they had in mind for the Messiah. And this is understandable. If we're really honest, most of us want a Messiah who will give us the answers, tell us what to do when things get rough, and certainly not leave us when we need him. But with Jesus, it's far more complicated and more real. He was there blessing the disciples, and suddenly he was gone. He was on earth, present, and then he's absent in heaven. He dies, comes to death and new life, visits, and then promptly leaves. Jesus taken into heaven by God actually means something quite particular. It means that Jesus in all his humanity, his whole life, all his emotions, his memories, his actions and his relationships, all of that was taken up into the divine presence. It's not his spirit God to heaven. It's not his essence or some disembodied soul that ascends to the Father's side. It's the transformed and resurrected Jesus. The Jesus in today's reading from Acts, who for 40 days met, ate, and instructed his disciples. The Jesus who still bore the marks from his earthly life. And all of that's important because it depicts, not because it depicts some amazing feat of flight, but because it confirms that the life of this particular person, Jesus of Nazareth, is intimately connected to the life of the creator of all that is, was, and ever will be. That's why we say in the Nicene Creed, he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. The particular gift of the Christian message 
is not that you will never suffer, you will never struggle. It is that when you do, God will be there with you. And not just with you, but helping to redeem those very experiences so you don't have to run from them or deny them or be ashamed of them, however awful or painful they may be. The ascension of Jesus means that humanity, all of us, everything, everyone who ever existed and whoever will exist, no longer has to hide any part of our lives from God. The ascension is the message that humans actually matter in heaven. Our whole lives matter in heaven, not just the part that we like. Well, there will be times when you feel you need to hide some part of your life from God. Maybe you've hurt people who are close to you. Maybe you've been, perhaps you've been hurt so badly you feel particularly stuck in your life. These things are what the ascension of Jesus speaks to. These very moments, God wants to know all parts of your particular life, so that all of you will be present, fully present in heaven. While he was blessing them, he left them and was taken up to heaven. While he was blessing them, he was taken up, and he was taken into heaven. And so as we live out our lives, in the good times and those not so good, all of our experiences are, or will be, taken up into God. Everything I am, everything you are, it's all accepted by the Creator, the Redeemer, and the Enabler, and the Enabler, who never stops loving us. Which brings us back to where I began. Those experiences of which we might be rather ashamed, those feelings we believe have no place in the kingdom of God. The message of Easter is that nothing in creation is so bad it cannot be redeemed by the Creator and His love. The message of the Ascension is to remind us that, yes, we are human, with so many human experiences and feelings, and we are members of the body of Christ. And we are accepted and loved by God as we are. Not the perfect ideal, which we would like to think, but we never fail to get to. The body of Jesus has been taken into God's presence with all its emotions, memories, actions, relationships. And that's the promise for us too. All of our humanity, the fun bit, the loving bit, the highs we shall never forget and the others, the trials, the pain, the regrets, all of those things which we may be ashamed, all of those are accepted by God, into God, and redeemed by his love. Thanks be to God. Well, let's remember what we believe as we affirm our faith in our creed. Do you believe and trust in God the Father, source of all being and life, the one for whom we exist? I believe and trust in him. Do you believe and trust in God the Son, who took our human nature, died for us and rose again? I believe and trust in him. Do you believe and trust in God the Holy Spirit, who gives life to the people of God and makes Christ known in the world? I believe and trust in him. This is the faith of the church. This is our faith. We believe and trust in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. God will now lead us in our intercession. Let us join our prayers with those of our Saviour Christ, seeking the Father's blessing and the gifts of the Spirit.
Jesus Christ, great high priest, living forever to intercede for us. Pray for the church, your broken body in the world. Lord, hear us. Lord, Lord graciously, graciously hear us. us. Jesus Christ, King of righteousness, enthroned at the right hand of the majesty on high. Pray for the world and make it subject to your gentle rule. Lord, hear us. Lord, Lord graciously, graciously hear us. us. Jesus Christ, Son of Man, drawing humanity into the life of God. Pray for your brothers and sisters in need, distress or sorrow. Lord, hear us. Lord, Lord graciously, graciously hear, hear us. us. Jesus Christ, pioneer of our salvation, bringing us to glory through your death and resurrection. Surround with your saints and angels, those who have died, trusting in your promises. Lord, hear us. Lord, Lord graciously, graciously hear us. us. Jesus Christ, Lord over all things, ascended far above the heavens, and filling the universe. Pray for us who receive the gifts you give us for work in your service. Lord, hear us. Lord, Lord graciously, graciously hear, hear us. us. Jesus Christ, keep the church in the unity of the spirit and in the bond of peace and bring the whole created order to worship at your feet for you are alive and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Blessed be God, by whose grace creation is renewed, by whose love heaven is opened, by whose mercy we offer our sacrifice of praise. Blessed be God forever. The Lord is here. His spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is indeed right and good, our duty and our joy, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Jesus Christ, the King of glory. Born of a woman, he came to the rescue of our human race. Dying for us, he trampled death, and conquered sin. By the glory of his resurrection, he opened the way to life eternal, and by his ascension gave us the sure hope that where he is, we may be also. Therefore, the universe resounds with Easter joy, and with choirs of angels, we sing forever to your praise. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Lord, you are holy indeed, the source of all holiness. Grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit and according to your holy will, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. For in the same night that he was betrayed, took bread and gave you thanks. He gave it to them saying, take, eat, this is my body which is given for you, do this in remembrance of me.
In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Praise to you, Lord Jesus. Dying, you destroyed our death. Rising, you restored our life, Lord Jesus. Coming, glory. And so, Father, calling to mind his death on the cross, his perfect sacrifice made once for the sins of the whole world, rejoicing in his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension and looking for his coming in glory, we celebrate this memorial of our redemption. As we offer you this our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, we bring before you this bread and this cup, and we thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. Send the Holy Spirit on your people and gather into one in your kingdom, all who share this one bread and one cup, so that we, in the company of all the saints, may praise and glorify you forever through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory be yours, Almighty Father, for ever and ever. Amen. Looking for the coming of his kingdom. As our Father taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. Jesus, Lamb of God, have mercy on us. Jesus, bearer of our sins, have mercy on us. Jesus, Redeemer of the world, grant us peace. We say together the prayer of God our Father, you have raised our humanity in Christ. Mercifully grant that we may set our hearts in the heavenly places through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Indeed, He is Lord. And we're going to sing that now as our next hymn. He is Lord, he is Lord, he is risen from the dead, and he is Lord.
there are a couple of notices. Firstly, to thank Steve and Andrew, Roz and Liz and everybody else who's worked to help us to put this service across uh, the internet. And there's another special notice which uh, I've been asked to tell you about. It seems that Lucy Sass has been busy. She's arranging a parish quiz. And it's uh, apparently going to probably happen on Sunday evening the 14th of June at 7.30. Uh, and it says here, I'll tell you about it. Um, please put an advert uh, asking people, families, singles, couples, to buddy up with other people who are on their own, either through Zoom or using Zoom, or perhaps you can, uh, if they haven't got Zoom, you can talk to them on a landline while the um, quiz is on. Suggestions to how to get the word out to other people. Please do spread the word around. Margie from Stony Stanton is setting the quiz. She will give time for questions to be relayed to others via phone. Uh, and it's, we're going to try and make it across the parish and include as many people as possible. So if there are people who haven't got Zoom or aren't able to access a computer or whatever, who you think you would like to have in your team or you think would like to be in a team, then please do contact them and we'll try and make sure that at least one member of each team has access to Zoom on the evening. So there you are. Um, it won't be an instant surefire quiz because we'll have to have time for people to phone a friend if they need to do so. And I think that's it as far as notices of concern for the moment. And so, may the Spirit, who set the church on fire upon the day of Pentecost, bring the world alive with the love of the risen Christ, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, be among you and remain with you now and always. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Alleluia.